Lauren, should we go ahead and move on to the next session? I think so. I'm excited for this one. Um, so our next session is called Building a Strong Inquiry Pool for Graduate Programs. And I know we have a ton of graduate program related uh, attendees today, so I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people interested in this one. Just as a reminder, we'll be fielding questions from the group. So if you have questions for our presenters today, please post those and we will uh, gladly post them to the to the presenters at the end. Our presenters today are from Jacksonville University. We have Katie Jackson, Director of Creative and Digital Marketing, and Vinny Rodriguez is joining her. He's the Director, Associate Director of Enrollment Operations. So we know that identifying pr prospective graduate students is more important than ever, uh, but it's still one of the most elusive aspects of recruiting and enrolling these students. And in this session, Katie and Vinny are gonna explain to us the multi-channel marketing strategies that Jacksonville's been using to identify prospective graduate students, both who are those in uh, stealth mode and those who are actively seeking information. This, information, this presentation uh, is also gonna give us a lot of great tips on messaging these future graduate students in ways that will increase their conversion journey from inquiry to applicant and and beyond. So welcome, Katie and Vinny. We are so excited to have you join us today. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hi. Hi. Thanks, thanks for the warm introduction. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We'll let you guys take, take the floor. We're excited to learn from you guys today and hear what great things you've been able to accomplish this year. OK, let me get that shared screen going. And then we will take it away. And thanks everyone in the chat saying they're looking forward to this. Some nice encouragement. Okay, share screen, share screen, screen two. Lots of love for the grad population here. Okay. Okay, now I can't see anyone, but you guys can see my screen, correct? Yep. Okay. So Benny can um, let me know if anyone is commenting my name. All right. So thanks so much again for everyone having us. We're really excited to be here and talk to you today as our great introduction. Thank you guys for that. We're going to be talking about building a strong inquiry pool for graduate programs using multi-channel marketing. So we'll introduce ourselves a little bit more. My name is Katie Jackson Weber, and I'm the Director of Creative and Digital Marketing at Jacksonville University. I'm housed out of the Office of Marketing and Communications, but I work very closely with admissions and advancement, both on the undergrad and graduate side. And then I will let Vinny introduce himself. I'm Vinny Rodriguez. My title is Associate Director of Enrollment Operations. Um, that means that I am responsible for uh, the teams of individuals that get all of the data into and out of our two admissions databases, one for undergrad, one for grad, uh, as well as all the documents and um, stamping things as official and the wonderful, wonderful minutia of, of enrollment operations. So before we started this presentation and got into all of the details, I wanted to say one point that I think we all know, but sometimes forget, is the importance of marketing and admissions working together and working closely. The fact of me and Benny being here today giving this presentation is a perfect example of that. So we started four years ago trying to integrate our teams as best as we could, and to the point of sometimes people will see me and think that I work in admissions, and I'm like, that is a victory, or they think I work in advancement. That's what we want. We want those lines to be blurred so that the greatest success can happen, like we're about to talk about. So a few ways that we found that's been helpful to do that is we started biweekly working sessions and strategic marketing meetings. And those happen both on the undergrad and the grad side. So they kind of flip back and forth. And the difference between those is the working ones are the people who are making all these materials we're going to talk about. And then the strategic ones are the people higher up, such as VPs and senior directors and directors talking about the strategy behind these. And then we also started summer planning Fridays. I know that admissions, you never sleep. It's never not busy. We all can understand that. But the uh, summers, it does slow down a little bit. Last summer, we didn't get that because of COVID, but we were getting that again this summer. So taking time on our calendar that's strategically marked out for four hours to really strategically plan admissions and marketing for grad during the summer. We try to keep open lines of communication through email, phone, text, teams, you name it. 
and again, just that greatest success has happened for us um, since we established Blurred Lines. So at this point, I was going to let Benny talk a little bit about how myself and him work together specifically. Yeah, so the, the Blurred Lines is a great um, illustration for how we have sort of come to work together. Um, you know, building the interpersonal dynamic, um, knowing enough about a person to know when's a good time to text or uh, the best way to communicate. Um, Katie and I have collaborated, just the two of us, on um, building out reports and, and figuring out how to best uh, prove the value that we're creating for the university. So but also before we get into the multi-channel marketing, I wanted to do some level setting on ways that we've collaborated, um, what our goals as a team were, what our goals as our capture with capture were, some helpful context. Um, and so we'll go through these next two slides and then we'll start to get into the nuts of this presentation. So like everyone, we wanted to increase the quantity and quality of our applicant pool. Who doesn't want more applicants and better applicants? Um, we also wanted to recruit for new programs. I'll talk about that a little bit more on the next slide, but we were launching a lot of new programs and we knew that was happening. We also wanted to start a partnership with Capture. And when, when we found them, our primary goal was retargeting leads on our website to create conversions. But then he's gonna touch on some added benefits that came from working with them. But when we initially found them, it's because we wanted to capture people in the moment. So on our website, we wanted them to get that advertisement to pop up right then, or we wanted them to get the email in their inbox right at that moment that they're on our website versus two weeks later when we would serve it to them. So that's kind of why we started a partnership with them in addition to all of the digital marketing efforts that we do. And then Vinny can touch on some of those added benefits that came that we didn't even know would come until we started working with them. Right. So, um, I, and it was interesting. I was brought into the, the capture relationship establishment fairly late in the game, which is um, usually a point of stress for me. Uh, but it has been a, a thoroughly pleasant experience. Um, uh, one of my big themes is making computers work for us. Um, and so efficient data movement really means getting the information from one place to where it needs to be uh, with as few manual steps as possible, right? Everyone hates downloading a file, dragging it over somewhere else, and then uploading it in whatever form it needs to be in. Um, being able to send information both ways, not just from Capture to our CRM, but from our CRM back to Capture, uh, CRM uh, Client Relationship Management System. Um, so because we're able to send data back, again, very efficiently, um, we can use some of the data that we have in our CRM that Capture may not already have to um, target communications uh, based on who the recruiter is, as well as um, using some of the intents and the behavioral and affinity analytics that Capture provides for our recruiters to prioritize who they should reach out to. You know, if someone is uh, very much engaged on our website and Capture knows that, we can use those scores so that their call lists aren't just a laundry list of all of their leads, but shows people with intent. Um, and finally, finally, data visualization was a, a huge benefit. Um, our CRM has some reporting capabilities, but um, Capture is absolutely uh, head and shoulders um, much better to look at. There's a great map where we can see where our leads are coming from. Uh, we can see at a glance how all of our um, different presentations are doing, uh, how they're performing over time with line graphs, and uh, it's, a, it's a really great experience. Um, for some helpful context about our, our experience with Capture, um, it was roughly a year ago, 18 months ago, uh, we had a relationship with an online program manager um, that ended. And what that really meant for us um, and what they provided for us at the time was a lot of marketing and recruiting and um, working the application funnel on our behalf, uh, as well as some of the educational uh, support pieces. So what that meant for us really was we had to do all of that in-house now. Um, we had to stand up a full admissions team for all of these previously online programs and uh, handle our loan, our own lead generation and sourcing and nurturing, um, which is something that we hadn't done in this space before. Uh, we also opened a third location for graduate studies. Uh, we are currently over in Arlington 
Arlington, which is sort of the east side of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, we opened a location uh, roughly four years ago downtown to support some of our uh, medical and our business cohorts. And now we're opening a third location in Palm Coast. So with the, with the um, greater availability of cohorts, we definitely had to beef up the pipeline to support it. And then the pandemic happened, and I know we're all sick of hearing that, but it's helpful context in this because we knew that we had a third location opening and we knew that our relationship with our OPM was open ending, but we didn't know the pandemic was gonna happen. Luckily, we were already moving in a digital direction, so we just accelerated that even more but we didn't slow down. We launched six new graduate and professional studies programs, and I'm proud to update that we're up by 67 graduate and professional studies deposits compared to this time last year. So we kept everything going even through this time. So now what you came for today, hopefully all of that context was helpful to get to this point in the presentation, multi-channel marketing. What does that look like for us and our graduate and professional studies audience? So some of the strategies that we use, Google search has been really successful for us in leads. We have been able to get really good quality leads from them. It's because people, they sit at home and they search best MBA programs in Florida. And we want to be top in mind. We don't want to be number 10 at the bottom because SEO can only do so much. Google display, we've been using them as well. Um, we purchase these tactics in house, but um, we purchase them through Google's self-service and we use them to purchase leads and retargeting. So the display shows up in all of your Google networks, such as Gmail, when you're on Google's website and the graduate and professional studies audience, we've seen really good results there as well. Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. This has been really successful for us to retarget throughout the funnel. So moving someone from a lead to an application or to a deposit. And I'll show in real life what that looks like um, after Vinny talks about some of the technology at the end, I'm gonna go through messaging and show you what this like full cycle looks like for us. Um, we've gotten creative about purchasing leads. So I know that most of you will know GRE, GMAT, we all purchased that, but thinking a little bit out of the box this year, having some extra travel funding that we didn't use and thinking, what about something like the Women in Aviation Society for our aviation program? And that's been really successful for us because it, those leads aren't being used as much as GRE and GMAT that we all purchase. Um, so I just challenge you to be creative about where you're getting leads from. We have not been as successful on the graduate and professional studies with TikTok, Snapchat, and YouTube. It hasn't gotten us a good ROI. I would be interested to hear, and I won't be able to see that chat until after, but if that has been different for anyone else, seen great on the undergrad side. TikTok has been wonderful for us on the undergrad side this last year to promote visits, but hasn't helped us as much on the graduate side. So we've pulled away from that. We also, we started the relationship with Capture because we noticed that what was happening is we were getting a lot of really good leads. We had come in and we had worked hard and we had, as we've alluded to, oh, the Google, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and we had all these leads, but they weren't moving through the funnel like we wanted them to do. And we were doing all the traditional recruitment and marketing things that you all here probably do today, like making phone calls and emails, but we still weren't seeing that threshold move over. So that's why we started talking to Capture. and. For those of you who aren't familiar with their product, part of their product allows you to serve ads directly on your website while someone's on there. So they can be on there looking at an MBA program, and if they look at it so many times, they're gonna get a form that's gonna ask them to fill out an RFI. Another example is how Vinny sets up, which he'll talk about later, where the CRM is talking to capture. If someone is in our lead database and then they go back to the website, and let's say we knew they applied, but they haven't finished their application, they just started it. So we worked with Vinny and Capture to set up an email that when they were on our website, if they had started an application but not finished it, they would get an email right then. So we know they're thinking about our program at that moment, not at 6 p.m. when the dog's barking and the kid's yelling, no, 12 p.m. at lunch when I'm thinking about finish my application, I get the email that says, we know you started it, why wait, do it now. Um, so, for us, that has been 333 emails so far, and we've had 60 deposits from emails that were opened and 23 deposits from emails that were clicked. Then he's gonna talk about technology and tracking on the next slide, but before he did that, I wanted to talk about the marketing side of that. Um, so we had to get 
on board with Google URL Builder. UTM, if you don't know what it is, Vinny will briefly touch on it, but I highly suggest going to Google's website. There's lots of free tutorials on it, understanding the importance of Google UTM and the tracking that it allows you to do. And that has been a game changer for us. The ability to track not only ROI, but move people and do these things like we're talking about doing is because of that. And so I've included a link here for you on that. Um, Google Analytics and Dashboards. In the last two years, we've been working more out of Google Analytics, and we haven't been as happy about how visually that looks. It's not up to the caliber as like what you would see in Capture. So we are starting to build Google Dashboards, and I've included a link for you on that as well. It's a great tutorial, and it allows you to just visually show really nice the ROI and see those areas that need improvement that you need to work on. So now I will turn it over to Vinny for a little bit. So Katie and her team are great at the what and the why. Um, I and my operations folks get the pleasure of working out the how. Um, so here we go. Uh, the first uh, drop in that bucket has to be UTM. Um, UTM stands for the Urchin Tracking Module. It is effectively a SWOT analysis for what's working and what's not. So um, in any given link in um, an ad or a promotional email, you can add uh, certain terms to the end of the URL um, to the web address to indicate what source, uh, where they came from, um, whether that was a from an email from our CRM or if that was from Capture, if that was from a Google ad, um, what was the medium? Was it an email? Was it a text message you sent? Was it, again, a, a social media lead? Uh, what terms were used? What was the buzzword that really captured their attention? Um, what's the overall content, the main idea of the ad or the mailing? Um, and then what's the campaign? What's the overall effort that really captured this lead? So using those five data points on the way back in uh, through Capture and through our CRM, we're able to really see what's working, what's not, what we can improve, and what we really need to capitalize on to, to build the rest of our funnel. Um, you'll hear me talk a lot about data because that's the world that I live in. Um, you have to have clean data and clean system management across all of the databases you're interacting with. So um, uh, what that really looked like for us was a lot of collaboration between uh, me and our uh, representatives at Capture to make sure that fields um, that the uh, visual term, the columns in the spreadsheet all align and that there's definitions that are shared back and forth. Um, so that what we're pulling in is accurate to what they're sending and then what we're sending back is interpreted correctly on the capture side. Um, that transparency is absolutely key. Um, you know, things get lost in translation all the time and relating databases uh, is absolutely important for having clean data. Um, one particular data point that has really been the linchpin in all of um, our efforts is a unique identifier, a shared unique identifier between Capture and our CRM. Um, so what that allows us to do is when a lead passes through Capture, when somebody visits our website and it's um, anonymous user number 875 and they fill out a form, well, that form that gets sent over to our CRM and a unique identifier, their CRM ID gets created. Um, so in the data we share back to Capture, we're including that unique identifier. That way, any further visits from the same device or from the same um, physical location can be attributed to that individual in our CRM. Um, and through that shared unique identifier and through how Capture works in tracking um, web activity and also intent, uh, we're able to look at that in an incredibly granular um, way and find meaning and value in our marketing efforts. Um, our CRM is Slate uh, from Technolutions. It's fairly fully featured and one of their reporting um, tools we use is called Ping. Um, if you would go to the next one for me. Um, so Ping is Slate's built in um, sort of web tracking script similar to what Capture provides, though not nearly in um, the same terms. Um, the reporting is not as pretty, but um, using Slate and using Ping to track some of the UTM and some of the Capture activity, um, Katie and I are able to work together to uh, build reports and to build tools for our recruiters and for her marketing folks to see, again, what's working, what's not, what we need to improve, what we need to capitalize on. Um, 
captures tracking and reporting has been really helpful for us. Um, so part of the data we're feeding back is where they are in the funnel, whether it's a, a prospect or an inquiry or uh, if they've applied or they've paid their deposit or if they are enrolled and currently a student. Um, so if we pull up any given record, we can see where that individual is in the funnel. Um, we can also see any campaigns we're currently running and a count of how many people have interacted with that campaign and where they are in the funnel. Um, so we can see if an ad is really speaking to our deposited students, maybe we want to try to uh, shift the call to action a little bit. Um, we can see their physical location. Uh, I talked about it in data visualization uh, a minute ago. Um, having a world map of where we're getting leads from is uh, really, really surprisingly helpful. Um, we had a really interesting um, instance where we had a lot of um, applications from one specific region in Southern Africa. And, you know, through capture, we were able to really quickly figure out where that was and, and you know, act on it. Um, again, capturing ad performance through UTM and through ping is absolutely incredible uh, using capture and using slate um, because uh, what we all are doing right in operations and in marketing is is creating showing how much value we bring through our efforts um, automation in the CRM is also imperative uh, we all only have 40 or 50 hours in a given work week and the, the less of that time we can spend manually moving files, um, the better we can utilize our own creativity and our own efforts. So um, what Capture was able to do is generate a file that, that would send over to Slate's uh, storage server, and then Slate can generate the file that goes back and push it over to Capture that way. All of this happens uh, nightly, and uh, no one on my team really has to do anything for it to happen. Um, making the computers work for us is sort of the mantra that I live by. Um, and then the bi-directional feed is informing messaging. Um, and I think Katie's going to talk a bit more in a few minutes about how exactly uh, we are using the data coming back in to more surgically target our messages to each of these individuals. Thanks, Benny. So if you've been watching this, this is probably the part of the presentation that you were really excited about. So we're going to talk about how all of this back end comes to life and show some of the pretty goodies. OK, so custom messaging using real time data has been changing for us and um, allowed us to have that success of being up by so many deposits. We've also had to change our outlook of the conversion journey from inquiry to applicant to beyond. I know most of us are always thinking about, okay, got to get my inquiry, got to get my application, got to get them to deposit. But sometimes we don't think about getting them to show up that day and that kind of stops. So we've changed our marketing to think about the entire poll and not stopping until they show up and we've handed them off to a professor basically. Um, we also launched a fast application that I'm going to talk about a little bit and I've included a link for you here. The FAST application is this whole idea of filling out an application in five minutes or less, and you're pre-qualified. And then we follow up for other materials. So it takes you five minutes, and within 48 hours, we tell you if you're pre-qualified for our program or not. It doesn't mean that you're in. It just means that you could be a good fit. And we've seen a lot of good started applications come from that, and that's been really successful for us. It hasn't worked for programs that require more materials, like. Some of our nursing programs, not a good fit. You need a license, but things like our MBA program where it the requirements are much slimmer, like bachelor's degree, GPA of this, and we were able to fit that in, the, in a form, and it's, it's been really successful for us. Virtual chat, we all know about virtual chats, but we leaned into virtual chats even more. We started doing those at the beginning of COVID, but leaned heavier into them. These one-on-one -on -one experiences, Jacksonville University sells a small program experience. And so it's giving those people that experience at the front end and not just when they get to their classes. We sell the 11 to one teacher ratio. So it's that a whole idea of, okay, my admission recruiter is gonna meet with me one-on-one -on -one versus just a virtual information session. One-year programs, that was another messaging that worked really well for us and that we pivoted into. We noticed that there was a pool of people who didn't know what they wanted to do. They just knew that they wanted to go back to school and that they wanted to seize this opportunity and that life has happened during COVID and this is a great opportunity to start a new career. And they weren't sure what they wanted that to be in, but they knew they wanted to do it as fast and as economical as possible. And one year allows them to do that. So we've started advertising here, all the programs that you can complete in one year. 
We also started thinking about Instagram takeovers for a grad audience, which is something we used to only do on the undergrad side. And I was always like, no, that's not grad. That's not grad. But COVID put me in a position where I thought, well, we might as well try. And we have seen phenomenal success. I'm sure everyone makes the jokes about the moms are taking over Instagram. It must be happening because it's been really, really successful having a current student or admission recruiter or alum. Um, We've seen better success with current students and alums and admission recruiters dropping on for the day. We send out a text message at the beginning, say, hey, we're going to be on there. Come get all your questions answered. And that experience of hearing what a real student or alum had has been really helpful for people. We also record them and put it together in a quick email and send it to everyone. So if they don't have Instagram, every lead in the funnel gets it for that particular program, because we do them by program. So here's a few examples of what this looks like when it comes together. So on the left is our JU um, FAST application, and we've received 96 applications since we've launched this. And that's kind of what that five minutes to apply, two days to receive a decision, one year to earn your master's degree. And then we have the unofficial pre-qualifier type language in there. Um, On the right, you're gonna see the virtual information session recordings link. So, we all do virtual information sessions, but we noticed in some data that a lot of people were registering but not attending. But even though they weren't attending, they were still depositing at really good rates. So it was getting over the fact of they just want the recording. So we started this campaign of get a recording anytime, any place. You don't have to schedule, fits in wherever you want. And we've actually got 303 leads from this. So it's been really successful for us. Yeah. Uh, if I could hop in, um, one of the, the, the most successful points I think of all of our messaging um, and that Katie and her team has done a really good job is all of our messaging has a really clear call to action. Um, what is it that we want the, the individual to do at this part of the journey? Do we want them to start an application? Do we want them to register for a virtual event? Do we want them to start a fast app? Um, it's always uh, really clearly designated, uh, usually at the top of the email. Um, with a big button, um, and I think that's that's been a, a very large part of growing our grad funnel. Thanks, Benny. So the end of this presentation is I'm just going to walk through what this looks like when all of these pieces come together, and I've broke it into two areas. I've broke it into getting a leader prospect and then getting that leader prospect to move into an application and then completing their application. So let's pretend that... Um, Well, before I start this, I do want to give one disclaimer. When we sit down and we talk about these scenarios, it doesn't always work this way. Sometimes they find us in Facebook or sometimes they find us through a recruiter, but then they get retargeted by these marketing. But this is what we mapped out for the year. And this is what we're expecting to happen, knowing that people are going to fall in at different times. So my friend, she's looking for uh, my imaginary friend here for the this scenario. Um, She's looking for an MBA program. So she searches best MBA programs in Florida. And then we come up because of our ranking in CEO magazine and buying a Google search app. So she clicks on it. She sees it. She thinks about it. And then her kid is crying in the back and she's like, "Mm, maybe now it's not the time. So then she started a Facebook advertisement about our one year programs and thinks to herself when she's laying in bed and sees that advertisement pop up on her phone. Okay, I could do this a year, a year, anybody can do anything for a year and change your life. So the moment goes away in her head, she goes to sleep, the day goes on, and she's in the next day. So the next day around lunch, she thinks about this again, she's on lunch break at her work, and she visits JU's website for MBA program and thinks, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? I'm still contemplating. And now she's going to see a PID form from Capture pop up that's on the screen that says, are you interested in learning more about earning a graduate degree or professional certificate? Tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll send you some information. So she fills this out. And currently we've had 841 forms, which is a great amount of organic leads. Um, Very happy about that. And she's gonna receive an email communication from Slate through Jacksonville University that asks her to attend a virtual information session. So she signs up for the information session and she has all intentions of coming, but then her kid has a baseball game. So she forgets about that, moves on with her life, and um, Jay is kind of out of her mind at the moment. But then she's going to receive a storytelling advertisement on Facebook, Instagram, and a drip campaign about the benefits of one-year programs, the advising that you get, the course curriculum, the return on investment. 
And at the end of that, she's also going to receive an invite to a virtual chat with the recruiter for that program. And she attends it, which is a win. So she attended it. She was really excited there. The recruiter showed them how to start her to start how to start her application. She goes home, she starts her application after her virtual chat, and then life happens again. Kind of goes in the back burner and two weeks go by and she's been really busy and hasn't thought about the program anymore. But then she, life, a big life event happens and she really needs to get her master's now. Work has stepped in and said, you need a master's degree to be able to get a promotion. So she goes to JU's website and she's like, okay, I need to finish my application. This is the time, but is this the right time? I don't know, but I really want that raise. And so then she's gonna get an email because Capture and Slate know that she's on our website. She's gonna get an email to her email that's gonna say, why wait? Now's the time, let's do this, finish your application. She finishes her application, then she goes into our standard phone calls from recruiters, emails, text, digital ads to try to get her to deposit, and then she comes to Jackson University. So that's just an example of how it all plays out, and we will be happy to answer any of the questions that you have. And now I can answer the chat as well, since I was. Lots of chats coming through Katie so and Benny. Everybody chat. had so much to say. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I have so many questions. I feel like I should hold back because I can ask them to you at another time. Um, I will go ahead and ask you a couple that popped up from uh, from the group, but I did have one just clarifying question to ask you guys before we start, because I think it kind of fields some of the questions. How many programs, individual graduate programs, do you support with your marketing efforts? That's a big number. <laughs> big number, right? So how, um, do you, how do you decide how to uh, how to divide up between general grad promotions versus program specific? OK, so, so I can go ahead, Benny. You go first. So there's there's a um, there's sort of a logical uh, grouping that we use. So we've got okay. obviously the general graduate form that we use um, that, that lists all of our graduate majors. Um, and then we've got, you know, almost by college where we can take uh, most business ads will speak to most business masters seeking students. Um, uh, a lot of our applied health sciences we can use to communicate to that whole group. Um, so we, we sort of group them by school or by college and then um, the general grad population. And my one other question, because I get asked this all the time with my partners, uh, we always have a couple of program leaders who uh, push their program to the top of the priority list. How do you guys use the data that you're collecting to help you uh, show where you should be putting your marketing dollars? So I think that's been a two part thing for us. Um, one, data is important, but two, understanding from leadership priorities. So we all know people are going to be loud and that's good because that's their baby. But that's why we've started those strategic meetings with admissions and marketing. And that's us going through the numbers and saying, OK, well, this program can handle 10 people. They're currently at nine deposits. We only need one more. Well, maybe we don't need to spend as much money on there versus this program can handle 50 people and they're only at 20 or this program brings in this much revenue. So we have those conversations. The second thing is we've started monthly meetings with our program managers as well just to show them that we're giving them attention. And that has been extremely, extremely helpful because people want to know that you're giving them that attention and that one on one with a program manager and talking through what's already happened. Most of the time, they don't know that we are already doing all this marketing and then they have nine deposits and that they don't need to be loud. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, Heather, you want to ask some of the questions that came through? Yeah. So we've got, uh, I'm telling you, your session put the chat on fire. So we've got uh, from Andy Morris. The question is, in the RFI, you capture phone, but I didn't see a positive opt-in for texting. When do you ask for that opt-in? So in our internal RFIs, um, we have a positive opt-in. Um, our guidance from our internal offices is to treat them giving us their phone number as a positive opt-in until otherwise indicated. Good to know. Another know, question Andy. was asked, uh, how much retargeting do you do to your current or former students at the undergrad level? Um, because we, we know that they have a lot of brand recognition there. 
Yeah, so I think before COVID, that wasn't a big thing for us because we depended a lot on recruiters going to classrooms and then that stopped happening. So we started doing a lot of that. Um, we even geofenced graduation this year that was outside about all the programs you could do in a year. And we got, I mean, probably like 150 clicks in an hour. People were, it was really, really exciting. And then the other thing is these one-year programs, we've launched uh, what we call grad to grad. So if a student is being highly successful, we're encouraging professors to talk to them about it and say, have you thought about enrolling in this program? You're going to be able to get your bachelor's and your master's in five years. I think you would be a good fit. You're doing really good in your classes. You should think about applying. Yeah. I think another facet of, of multi-channel marketing is sort of getting out of the marketing world. Um, you know, when we think of marketing, we talk about emails and text messages and ads, um, but uh, some of the internal conversations we're having um, and part of blurring the lines between marketing and admissions and even grad and undergrad is, you know, if we have folks in our BSN, our Bachelor of Science in Nursing courses or in our RN to BSN program, at what point does it make sense for us to start talking to them as advisors, as recruiters about the master's in nursing, about the doctorate in nursing to figure out where their career goals are and how we can help them achieve them here, JG? Absolutely. I have uh, one question for the two of you because you play such different roles um, and you gave some really great background of what led you to here, right? Um, as you think about the last year or so of bringing on uh, this type of data, these types of interactions into your day-to-day -day world and into your operations, um, what would you share with folks who are thinking about it, the greatest thing that you have learned I would say the importance of data. Um, I have a student worker team and I feel like a lot of people get into marketing because they don't want to do math and you're going to yeah. do math. And data can inform messaging, data can do so much. I would also say not getting overwhelmed by the data. There's times that Vinny doesn't feel this way because he's in data all the time, but I am just like, this is so much data. What do I do with this? So taking a step back and understanding, okay, this is what I need to look. I need to look at the messaging. I need to look at the clicks and this other stuff isn't as important at this moment. That's great. Thanks, Katie. So a couple of things there. Um, one, uh, I think it's funny that my response is completely the opposite of Katie. I think <laughs> the relationships, um, because I live in data world and and you know look at a spreadsheet and find meaning. Uh, building the relationships between operations and marketing has been absolutely key. You know, Katie having my cell number to say, hey. Um, I'm looking for this field or I need this data for this reporter to figure out what we're doing here is so important to how the offices interact with each other um, that it, it, from an operations perspective, can't be overstated. Um, and then to speak to the data, I'm you wouldn't believe the data that I throw out without ever pulling into the CRM because it's not actionable. It's not important. Agreed. Most beautiful words I've ever heard. That data, if it's not actionable, it's not worth it. Somebody, somebody post that out in the social media channels. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh my gosh. Vinny, Katie, thank you so much for hanging out with us today, yes. sharing some amazing content with the crew.